Is the Pharaoh Concepts Bison Belt a glimpse at the future of tactical gear, or is it merely more clout bait for thirsty wannabe Instagram influencers to hat tip at one another? Hey, nice kit, brother. What are you doing later? What is up guys, my name is John with pewpewtactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that get weirdly and unexpectedly slightly uncomfortable. During the height of lockdown insanity last year, I kept myself occupied for like a week by putting together a battle belt setup that I then did a small feature on for a series of poorly lit videos filmed inside of the box that I paid too much money to live inside of per month. Truth be told, I'd been hesitant to get on the belt game for a few years because I'd never particularly enjoyed any of the contemporary options, always feeling a bit like even the most minimal or highly praised of those setups were clunky at best and downright uncomfortable at worst. And that's without getting into the types of setups some dudes opt for wherein the kitchen sink on your hips starts to require suspenders to keep them from falling off of your Hank Hill ass. I know y'all motherfuckers skipping leg day. Don't think I don't see you, I fucking see you. While the gray ghost gear belt that I picked up on the recommendation of a few friends worked well enough and was indeed the best belt setup I'd played around with up to that point, when worn for a full day out in the desert, I found myself still developing hotspots here and there that, while not a huge deal, did get obnoxious over time. It's kind of one of those types of discomforts that just simmers in the background all day, not ever really rising to the level of, yo, this sucks, I'm in pain, but when you realize it, it's hard to get your mind off of it, particularly over prolonged range or filming sessions. When Pharaoh Concepts announced that they'd be putting a battle belt out a while back, I was immediately intrigued, as they're consistently one of my favorite gear manufacturers on the market, and the initial pitch for the belt seemed almost tailored specifically to the gripes I have about other battle belts on the market, namely that achieving the kind of rigidity necessary to keep your kit from shifting about while you're wearing it usually requires some absurd number of high denier cordura layers all quadruple bar tack stitched into place, which, in my opinion, is exactly what winds up creating those discomfort areas. Pharaoh's approach is novel. By actually incorporating innovative advancements in material science, the bison belt is able to ditch all of the superfluous layers of cordura through deriving most of its integrity and rigidity from Tegris, an interesting thermoplastic composite that provides stiffness and impact resistance, all while remaining very lightweight. The end result is a belt that's incredibly flexible, yet still stiff enough to get the job done, such that you actually don't need the padding that many other companies opt to include on their belts to offset the discomfort comfort induced by all of the excess materials, because, simply put, the belt is comfortable enough on its own. I've been using the bison belt as my go-to work belt for the past few months, and the difference is, in my opinion, night and day. The setup comes with a very simplistic inner belt that's got a bit of adjustment for length or tightness, and secures at the front with a G-hook and nylon loop. Notably, it lacks the rigidity that some other belts feature on their inner belt, again, because this setup doesn't require it, meaning that you've got a lightweight, discreet, and flexible everyday use belt that's quite comfortable even when not doing gun things, and has indeed become my go-to for securing the, quote, tactical skinny jeans so many of you bitch about in the comment section. But for real though, look up outdoor research and stop telling on yourselves, nerds. I'm embarrassed for you. The outer belt then uses hookside Velcro to attach to the inner belt's soft loop, and is secured at the front with a cobra buckle with a generous amount of adjustment that can then be wrapped up and secured with another strip of Velcro that runs vertically through a slot near the buckle. One inch tubular webbing is then sewn directly through the laser cut thermoplastic, and provides the mechanism by which you can still attach your kit. The result? easily the most comfortable, lightweight, and slim battle belt setup I've ever used, especially compared to popular category mainstays like HSGI's Sure Grip belts. As I said, I've been wearing the thing pretty frequently for sometimes upwards of eight hours when we're filming a ton of content at once, and I often forget I've got it on, which is essentially exactly what I'm after for what I do. While I wouldn't necessarily frame them as downsides, there are, however, a handful of things to keep in mind here. Given that the belt is much thinner in profile than others, you may find that some of your pouches are going to want to shift around more than they would otherwise. 
For example, my STAC Kaiways with hard plastic belt mounts moved freely around the belt when I first installed them, as they sort of rely on tension derived from an assumed thicker belt to stay in place. This, however, was swiftly rectified through ditching the belt mounts for one of my favorite gear hacks on the market, what the fix straps. Essentially, flexible, laser-cut, rubbery replacements for malice clips that I can't praise enough as one of those must-have quality-of-life improvements if you hate weaving pouches onto molly webbing as much as I do. They're inexpensive, simple to use, and they just plain work. My holster also has a tendency to shift around a tiny bit too when the belt isn't being worn, as again, the Safari Land belt hanger I use is intended for use with much thicker belt systems. I actually don't mind this one as much, as it stays put when the belt is worn, especially when locked into my zone with the lower leg strap mod I've got on there. And it also means that I can don and doff the holster quickly if I need to for whatever reason, versus the back and forth jigsaw action required to ditch it when it lived on the Grey Ghost belt. Lastly, Pharaoh themselves note that the bison belt is absolutely not intended to be used for repelling or human retention whatsoever, but you know, Given that I don't ever need to buckle into a helicopter or swing in through windows as a D-list internet gun celebrity, it's not really a concern for me, personally. Shout out in the comments down below if it is for you. All in all, the Bison Belt is one of the coolest additions to my gear locker in recent memory, and I have essentially nothing but good things to say about it. If you, like me, were frustrated by the bulk or discomfort of other older generation belt setups, I would say seriously consider the Bison Belt if you manage to catch a restock in your size and chosen colorway, as I think you won't be looking back once you do. For an industry where so many things are slightly tweaked rehashes of existing formulas, I think the implementation of high-tech materials that actually wind up creating a superior product is rad as hell, and I hope it's a trend that continues as those fields continue to progress. While I know Pharaoh certainly isn't the only approach to the lightweight, high-speed belt setup at the moment, with offerings from Axel, GBRS, Ronin Tactics, and others being potential contemporaries, it's the one I currently own, and I couldn't be happier with it. That's gonna do it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done gear stuff, but I'm a gear nerd and I'm always buying gear even if it doesn't wind up on camera. So like I mentioned, Axel, GBRS, Ronin Tactics, if this is something that you guys wanna see me kinda really delve into, uh, maybe do some comparisons head to heads, let me know in the comment section below. We've got shirts as always. My name is John with PP Tactical. I will see you. Eh, whenever.